And at the beginning, it was science fiction. That's what uh, we were told. Had it ever been done before? No. So basically, from the patient side, it's almost nothing. We'll come to the hospital, they'll give a blood donation. That blood will go to the machine. The machine will basically separate the correct cells, engineer them. After about 10 days, mm -hmm. the patient will come back to the hospital, receive that bag of now, his own targeted T cells to target cancer, inject it in, and then within a few days, practically, the cells attack the cancer and the cancer is eliminated. Israel truly shines when it comes to technological research and development. And specifically in the medical field, we've created an ecosystem and a community that quickly and effectively bring to market life-saving technologies. This isn't only important, it's not only unique, it dramatically alters the life of those affected. From the headlines that we've read, it sounds unbelievable. It sounds fantastic to the point of, of science fiction. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's more tangible and true than you would think, but yes, it does sound like science fiction. We have the brightest of the entire world to end exactly. up in this lab. To my opinion, yes. <laughs> There's dramatic need. People are dying. There is a therapy, but we're not making it available. Now, there's no limitation. We are known for an imaginary mind, combining areas that not necessarily will work, but this is Zionism. We are not afraid to take the chance, even if the result will be failing. So what? You, you fail, you start uh, another idea that you have. Biotechnology is what happens when technology is based on biology. Researchers in this field use biological materials to develop commercial products, everything from pharmaceuticals and vaccines to quick check insulin pens and heart stents. Biotech is a cornerstone of global healthcare, and you guessed it, Israel is a world leader in developing hugely impactful medical devices that save lives. We're on our way up north towards Haifa to visit the Technion, which is one of the leading technical institutes in this country, and also uh, a university that's known around the world for its Nobel Prizes and many other innovations and discoveries. We're gonna meet with Professor Marcel Mahlouf, who, by what I've heard, is one of the leading researchers in the world of biotechnology. I mean, the work she's doing is truly groundbreaking. So what is this? Is this your lab? Yes, this is part of my lab. And I have 20 students here, excellent student that are doing the work. I was once uh, doing the work. Now you point fingers and tell them what to do. Yes. So I want to dive in a bit into some of the groundbreaking research you're involved in. And maybe you can start with the headlines and we can <laughs> get to the details. Well, it's hard. In general, my lab uh, is divided to two. One part is tissue engineering. In other words, building organ in the lab. As you see here, Is this lab-grown? It's lab-grown. Okay, all the material. For instance, in the case of bone, there are a lot of bone cancers that eat part of the bone. Once the physician take out the tumor, you have a hole. Now you can CT scan the hole. You translate it to a printer, which can print the part that is missing, but from which material? From a material that we isolated from a pig. So it's not an implant, you're helping the body regenerate. Exactly. Amazing. The other project is developing vehicles for treating cancer, vehicles that can target the drug to the tumor niche. So we take cells that all of us have and we empty their content, downsizing them to particles that can be filled with the drug of choice. Mm -hmm. Once the particles are injected to the bloodstream, they circulate. If you have a tumor, they will hook to the tumor. Why? because the tumor signals these specific cells to come and help to evade the immune response. So why not taking this membrane, only, only the outer surface, and making it as a vehicle, as a bus, that can take the drug to the tumor? And at the beginning, it was science fiction. That's what uh, we were told. Had it ever been done before? No. Some of the most important developments being made today are the ones related to life-saving technologies, the ones that directly improve the quality of life of people around the world. 
But much of this research and development wouldn't happen without the cooperation of hospitals like this one and the research institutes around the country. Some of the things we've seen are truly incredible. Ailments that just a short time ago would kill people or leave them debilitated can now be finally cured. These are truly life-saving technologies. Let's zoom out for a minute. Yeah. My basic understanding of this field. Okay. The general medical practice is to just bombard the entire body of the sick person. With a drug. With drugs that destroy the tumor to a certain degree, but also a ton Effect. of other things. Yeah. But I think the headline, and correct me if I'm overstating this, you found a revolutionary way of, of delivering medicine in cancer patients. To my opinion, yes. But let, let me compliment you as someone from the outside. We've discussed two items that each of them is an industry disruptor. Yes, but uh, that's the Technion, and yeah. that's the researcher, and I am one example of what is going on here. The Technion is truly a marvel. There's a reason it's one of the top universities in the world, and Professor Makhlouf explained to me why that is. The Technion was built like more than 100 years ago, mm -hmm. before Israel was established, okay? And it was built because we knew that we need to build our country, and we need transportation, and we need road, and we need other industries that will have the safety of Israel. The defense industry in Israel is a leading in the world. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you need it for your survival. So you need to accelerate it. You need to put funding and put your mind to think out of the box. Necessity. Same in biotech. We understand today that this is the field that we will need for our survival. Not only Israeli one, worldwide. In Israel, we believe in academia. So that's why you have so many universities. This institute is very unique in the sense that there are just like a very long list of innovation that's come out and have become products that are worth enormous amounts of money. Exactly. How did that happen? We are, I think, the only engineering institute in the world that has a medical school. It's not that we have collaboration with the medical school. Today we know how important it is because then we can talk. Our faculty is one such an excellent example because it's biotechnology and food engineering. You can have biotechnology, but adding the word engineering is very important. It means that you engineer processes, not only develop the processes or understand the processes, but you also engineer near them to transfer to the industry. As Marcel and the Technion fuel the industry with life-changing innovation, they are only the first part of the story. It takes partnerships with companies in the private sector to utilize their research and create marketable products. How's it going, Ohad? Very good, thank you. Good Welcome. to see you. So this is home? Oh, well, yeah. This is where I spend most of my time. So where, where are we in the country? We're in the north in the Galilee. This is a brand new high-tech park trying to bring high-tech and biotech industries into the north of Israel. That's Dr. Ohad Karnieli. His company, Adva Bio, is bringing a groundbreaking cancer treatment to the masses. About 30 years ago at the Weizmann Institute, Israeli scientists developed a new and extremely effective cancer therapy. But they never found a way to make this therapy easily accessible to patients. Dr. Ohad Karnieli and his team are working hard to remedy that. What a view. What an amazing view. Yeah. You guys, from what we hear, are doing something amazing here. Something that is going to be groundbreaking, something that we're going to be reading about for many years to come. So yes, when you look at cancer, it's a very complicated disease. It's a personalized disease. Mm -hmm. So the disease looks different in every different patient. So how does it work? Well, we have in our body cells Mm -hmm. that know to attack uh, disease cells. But the immune system. Right, it's part of the immune system. We shouldn't have cancer, but something goes wrong and it doesn't do that, that job. So what we're doing is we're taking a blood sample, isolating a few of these cells, engineering them now to identify the specific cancer of that specific patient and practically sending an army of directed patients' own T cells to that cancer. And practically, the cancer is eliminated. For good for good. In one shot? In one shot. That's amazing. Now you're probably asking then how come people are still dying? Because this has been approved three years ago. And the reason is it's almost impossible to manufacture because it's a per because patient. It's, it's per person. Yes. And that's practically where Adva Biotechnology comes into the picture. So do we get to see how this machine works? Yes, let's go to the lab. Awesome. So basically, from the patient side, it's almost nothing. They'll come to the hospital, they'll give a blood donation, that blood will go to the machine, 
The machine will basically separate the correct cells, engineer them. After about 10 days, mm -hmm. the patient will come back to the hospital, receive that bag of now, his own targeted T cells to target cancer, inject it in, and then within a few days, practically, the cells attack the cancer and the cancer is eliminated. So you've essentially built a lab in a box. A lab with the scientist in it. Yeah. With the scientist so, so instead instead of this thing, you would have had a room full of people in suits working away on the little vials. It's all happening in the machine. Yes. How big of a facility is this replacing? This is replacing about a team of five to eight people, two, three rooms. So it's a dramatic reduction. And I'm looking at the amount of information that it's monitoring live. It's very substantial. Yes, and, and that's the major difference than anything else. Because if you want to take the brain of a scientist and that art and make it a process, mm -hmm. you have to have a lot of information. And then calculate out of it what is the next step to do. And that's exactly what's happening here. We prove the product. We know it works. Next year, we're gonna do a pilot, and hopefully the year later, we'll start mass production, scale up everything, start supporting these therapies all over the world. The implications of Dr. Colonelli's work are beyond incredible. And from inception to application, this technology is 100% Israeli. Meanwhile, Professor Makhlouf is applying her latest biotech research to cutting edge industries. The path to success isn't easy, but for Professor Makhlouf and Dr. Carnieri, there's no way around it. It is a high-risk industry, but high-risk is synonym name for Israeli entrepreneur. We like to have challenges, we love high-risk, and uh, we are not afraid to take the chance. It's a gift to work on something you know that will affect lives of people. All this in a little country in the Middle East that just happens to be the homeland of the people through which God promised to bless the whole world. Thank you for joining us as we provide a spiritual insight of what God is doing in Israel and in the Middle East. If you want to learn more about what God is doing in Israel, make sure to visit us on our webpage and follow us on social media. Shalom, and God bless you for Jerusalem.